there's this opportunity to go run chickens in Mozambique. So not quite what I was dreaming or what I was looking for. My name is Manuel Rodriguez. I'm currently 35 years old. Um, and I'm the CFO of uh, Trans African Oil, um, which is, or at Matswani Capital, it's an investment holding company with investments all over Africa. And I am the managing director of a poultry integrated poultry project in Mozambique called Escolha do Povo, or EDP for for short. Um, when when I think back to my youth, uh, you know, there was times in my earliest recollections, I always thought I was going to be an entertainer of sorts, um, you know, either movie actor or, you know, a lead performer in a band or something along those lines. And then I remember there was a phase that I went through where I thought I was going to be a priest. And then I think if, if I go further on into, into my adolescence, uh, in my mind, I was always going to be a lawyer. Um, but towards the end of my high school career um, at the University of Johannesburg, they did these psychome psychometric tests, you know, where they evaluate your personality and, you know, they tell you this is where naturally you are quite strong and this is where you'd be better suited for career, etc. Um, so I went for, for that test despite, despite wanting to be a lawyer, knowing that was what I wanted to do. Um, I went for this test anyway. And it was quite interesting. To my, to my surprise, the, the results came back and the lady who, who the psychometrist who was, um, you know, giving me the feedback had said that I had quite a strong business inclination and I should rather go, go follow that. Um, and so what she, what she recommended uh, was that I do a, a BCom law. So I finished my law degree and then the University of Johannesburg had a conversion program where you could then get into an honors stream for accounting with just an undergrad. Um, so because I had an undergrad legal degree, they allowed me, it was a bit of a loophole in the system, but anyway, to cut a long story short, I'll end up getting into the honors program for, for accounting. So that's sort of like my history and academically how I got to the sort of the transformation process and how I got to going into the, the accounting field and, and into business. Growing up, I never saw myself going to business because my parents had a business and I saw the struggles that they went through, especially when the business wasn't doing so well. Eventually, the business closed. And so I think, you know, growing up and you watch this whole process, it, it instills a little bit of fear in you. So I always saw myself, once I, once I was on the chartered accountant stream, I always made the joke um, with, with my friends that I was going to be the CEO of BMW. So I saw myself in an executive role, but in an existing business business not not my own business and I think that was always because of of the fact that you know I saw how my parents battled and and you know it was just I suppose a natural fear and then how that changed was um, I was an, an audit manager at, at KPMG and one of the recruitment agents um, you know he came and he spoke to me and he said look uh, you know, there's these guys who are looking for a, a partner and um, they have this idea they want to start poultry in Mozambique. They're looking for somebody who's Portuguese speaking. Um, would this be of interest at all to you? And to be honest, you know, I was I was quite unhappy at KPMG at the time. And, you know, I had this vision that I was going to be, you know, the, the CEO of BMW. There's this opportunity to go run chickens in Mozambique. So not quite what I was dreaming or what I was looking for. But I thought, you know, it, it gives you the opportunity to head up a business, um, a reasonably sized business um, at quite a young age. It's, it's sort of like a, an MBA, um, but through practice, you know, as opposed to, to studying to get your master's in business, you're getting practical experience on, on how to do this. So I knew it was a bit of a gamble. Um, I knew that it was a startup business, um, you know, that it was going to be difficult. Uh, at the time, I would have never known how difficult it was going to be. But, you know, I was young and ambitious and I thought, you know what, and it's rural Africa. Um, this is great. Let's let's give it let's give it a chance. So at that point in time, you know, I was in a commercial or, you know, in a very corporate setup, you know, manager at KPMG International Firm. And now you've gone from that to, you know, a company that is set up in, in the bush in, in Mozambique with with all these pie in the sky dreams. So it was quite a big change, a mind shift change. 
Um, and through that, I think, you know, it's grown me a lot as, as a person because you come with these, you know, first world, high level, you know, corporate ideas of how business is. And then you get into a real environment and then you realize, okay, whoa, um, you know, these ideas are not quite, quite going to work. And sort of the challenges that you face on, on a day to day basis. You know, I've, I've learned that many times what you do need is not only a plan B, you need a plan C because chances are your plan B is going to fail as well. So it's just been a completely different experience. It's been a very uh, developmental experience, but at the same time, not without the, the, the challenges and, and the sleepless nights and, and, you know, all of that that I've had to sort of deal with over the past seven years. Swanee Capital is is very corporate, um, so it's effectively a an investment holding company where we've got investments throughout the region. One of those investments is EDP, but there are many others. So we play a lot in in fuel, and um, and I know a lot of a lot of people will say, okay, well, you know, fuel is you know contributing to global warming, etc. But if you look at the regions where we were playing playing in, there has been quite a big deforestation in those areas, um, you know, because people are burning wood and that type of thing in order to cook and, you know, to do all of those things, again, in, in very rural parts of, of the continent. So we've now made fuel more accessible and more available in those areas. And the consequence of that is to try and curb the de the deforestation in, in those areas. So I know it's a bit of a, um, a sensitive one because, you know, in terms of, you know, uh, combustible f uh, fuels and that, that type of thing, I know there's there's quite a lot of, of green movements away from the use of those things, but um, that's sort of where where we're placed on on that business. So I think I think the the biggest area where where you know I, where I exercise my influence in terms of, of making a difference is is in in the Mozambican market. There, there are a couple of, of ideas and visions that, that I have for the future of that business in order to catapult the current objectives that, that we've achieved, but to catapult them to sort of the next level. So one of the things that, that we've been thinking about is, is where our project is based in the Tet province. Um, we have quite a big, a big uh, dam called Korobasa, and there's a lot of, of fish farming that, that happens there. Now again, it's, it's access to protein for the local consumer. So what we have found in our study is that a lot of the feed in, in those fish farms come, come from other countries. Now our idea is the following. If we can set up a facility where we are that is able to produce a fish feed, not only do we create a higher demand for more agricultural products from our farmers, because we'll need those inputs to, um, to produce that feed, but we'll also be able to provide a lower cost feed to the fish farmers, which then in turn makes the, fish, the, the cost of fish um, more competitive. So the idea there is, is, are we able to make a protein source that is cheaper or more accessible to, to the guys who are living on, on minimum wage with, within Mozambique? And that is the vision of, of where, that's my next phase, where I want to go. So that's project A. In terms of project B and where I see, where I see us um, uh, going, you know, trying, trying to, to, um, to make a difference as well. And this is one of the things that I've noticed in dealing with our small scale farmers. These farmers grow their chicken and you can imagine that once the chicken is grown, if you take four or five days longer to sell that chicken, you have to feed that chicken because you can't just stop feeding it. It's a live animal that it has to carry on eating. But by doing that, what you're doing is you're obviously increasing your costs. So your margins come down the longer you take to, to feed uh, or to sell that bird. So the next investment that I would look at um, and and I've, I've been working quite hard on this uh, of, of late. But the idea here is that if we could get an investment for a commercial abattoir, where as a company, I can buy back your chicken I can slaughter and I can freeze and by doing that I can then target your your formal sector, your hotels, your restaurants, your uh, retail supermarkets, that, that space and by doing that 
I am I'm able to uh, to penetrate the sector that I'm not currently operating in. But not only that, I'm also making sure that when the when the chicken is grown, the farmer is able to sell it to me immediately and guarantee his margin. And that's sort of like that for me is the next phase. Um, not only to to make this the business of the farm a little bit more sustainable in terms of of making sure he guarantees uh, guarantees his margin, but on the fish side to also make sure that we're able to offer the most cost effective source of protein for people who really can't afford it. Thank you for listening to the Young Difference Makers podcast. You can listen to other podcasts in this series and you can head over to our website to find out more. We're at chartedaccountantsworldwide.com. We're also on Apple, Spotify and wherever else you choose to listen to your podcasts. If you enjoyed this podcast, please do like and subscribe. It will really help us get the word out there. Talk to you again soon and thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.